the whole team who is basically participating in this and uh, after a few uh, say formal lectures we will come into the informal mode also where we can discuss and sit with the participants to understand the things in different way without any language barrier without any say say such kind of structured uh, program we do not want to produce that or we do not want to conduct that we want to basically be informal and want to use your expertise wherever you are serving or wherever you have served for the past long years your experiences matter more here to bring us these new innovations into pedagogical methods and how to basically deliver things even or shift from those things which basically have been discussed in the inaugural uh, keynote address and also what has been the theme behind our this whole program where everything stands like that we have to take those experiences from both the sides actually and we will involve you into that and we will try more and more aisa hamara koshish thodi der mein hame jab hum informally shuru karenge तो हो जाएगी सेमिनार ऑर्गेनाइज कराना हमारे सीनियर प्रोफेसर्स भी कह रहे थे इट वाज लाइक द मोस्ट ट्रबल विच आई फेस आई वुड लाइक टू शेयर विद यू इट वाज लाइक अ शादी बेटी की कंडक्ट कराना या बेटी के उस साइड से था और इसमें जो दिक्कतें हैं ऑल दो वी हैव लर्न वी हैव लर्न फ्रॉम देयर कि कैसे करना है आगे के लिए क्या लेके चलना है तो वी एक्सपेक्ट ऑल दो देर इज few numbers of participants which we have but these are enriched participants which we have as we have thought of on our resource persons we have thought on our participants also esteemed participants who will share with us their experiences long experiences and we are very happy to see people who have more than 12 or 15 years of experiences have basically humbly become a participant here so may i request again to continue the analytical debate and understandings may i request again professor vivek kumar to have the second session here you know i was just uh, where did i stop i was just trying to argue the epistemological basis and philosophical basis of the knowledge now i was trying to move towards little bit of methodological understanding uh as a good teacher uh, always one begins with defining what exactly it is and therefore i will like to define what methodology is there are four uh, very important components uh, of methodology uh, one is uh, methodology defines subject matter of any discipline if it is methodology of social sciences it will define the subject matter of what is the subject matter of social sciences if it is methodology of science physical sciences it will define the subject matter of physical sciences if it is methodology of literature it will define subject matter of literature and so on and so forth so every subject matter will have its own methodology and every discipline will have its more more methodology the second aspect of methodology is it not only explain the subject matter but it also explains how that subject matter is constituted how that subject matter is constituted that means how facts of that discipline becomes fact we are doing methodology of social sciences and therefore i am trying to argue how the facts of social sciences become social fact to take an example uh, of durkheim durkheim argues that sociology is the study of social facts but how social facts become social fact he tries to differentiates between biological facts आपको भूख लगती है यू फील हंग्री योर टीयर्स आर कमिंग दीज आर बायोलॉजिकल फैक्ट्स एंड बायोलॉजिकल फैक्ट्स आर नॉट रिप्रेजेंटेटिव देन देर आर एक्चुअली यू आर इन डिप्रेशन यू आर ओवर इंथिजियास्टिक यू हैव एंगर दीज आर साइकोलॉजिकल फैक्ट्स एंड दीज फैक्ट्स आर रिप्रेजेंटेटिव बाय द इंडिविजुअल्स individuals represent every individual have its own different way of getting angry 
every other person may be having a different way of happiness, the way they laugh, the way they, they will cry. So these are individual representations. These are psychological facts. But social facts are collective in nature. They have beyond the individual's will. They have a collective and their shared power. And therefore, we have different ways in which the subject matter, the social facts of a subject matter defines social fact. So you will have different facts. The third aspect of a methodology is that it gives or provides the practitioner, the social scientists, precisely defined concepts and procedures. There are precisely defined concepts and procedure in a, uh, in, in a methodology. And last but not the least, methodology defines the limits of scientific, social scientific activity. So we are talking about four characteristics. One, subject matter, how that subject matter becomes a subject matter, how the facts become facts. It provides uh, tools and procedures, concepts and procedures, and it also defines limits. And it is here that methodology differs from perspective and also theory. It is different from, methodology is different from perspective. Perspective will only give you nature and scope of a thought. It will not give you procedures. It will not give you tools. And a theory gives you empirical evidences. But here we are talking about how things take shape. And therefore, you know, included in methodology is the concept of epistemology. How? What is the source and foundation? I have told you in the beginning. So these are four very important characteristics of a methodology. Now, as we know that social sciences, social sciences were divided into two main types of methodologies. One was positivism and another was humanism. I call it humanism. Some people may call it differently, uh, hermeneutics or others. Now, what is the basis of these two perspectives? As time moved, what, are the, what is the basis, epistemic basis of these two perspectives? One, positivism was born in France, especially because of the domination of Newtonian physics. And within this, unity of sciences one, unity of sciences was hailed. Unity of sciences that all, all are part of all natural, you know, elements are of the same flock. That means nat nature is same. All the elements of the nature, they are similar. Whether it is tree, plant or human being. They are part of nature. And therefore, we can understand this nature from the uh, methods what we understand in natural sciences. The way we understand natural world, we can also understand the social world. From same method as was understood the scientific method, uh, we were, will also understand the natural world that is social world also. This was the unity of sciences because they are a part of nature, the plant, the animal and the social animal, they are part of the nature. Therefore, science can understand natural world. Similarly, we can understand the social world and that's why positivism was born and in this we have an exemplar, if you want to read that exemplar, that is Rules of Sociological Method. Rules of Sociological Method is an exemplar of positivist understanding of social sciences. Now in this, important aspect to understand in positivism is that how social facts have become social fact, you know, because in nature, in human beings, 
there are so many aspects which can be understood and which can be misunderstood as social but everything is not social as I have just explained you some is biological some is psychological and some is social so the subject matter of social sciences is social fact and what is social fact how the social fact is carried out it was done by extracting differentiating first it differentiated it differentiated biological and then it differentiated social now this is not representative this is representative represented by individual and this is by collective individual will doesn't matter here even if you want to try to change individual will will not be matter will not matter here and therefore Emil Durkheim is basically trying to establish sociology as a autonomous autonomous discipline why did he write this book rules of sociological method he wrote this book sociological method to establish sociology as a autonomous discipline second he also tried to create a different epistemic basis of social reality he was trying to establish a different epistemic basis for social reality a new source and foundation of sociology for him and now in this he is basically uh, the other aspect which he is trying to create is that he is discarding he is discarding methodological individualism he is trying to look into he is trying to create collective collective understanding basically of social action establish he is trying to uh, discard methodological uh, individualism and trying to create methodological holism holism that totality has to be understood you cannot understand individual social action you have to understand the collective and therefore he creates methodological holism the third thing which he is trying to also argue is realism he is trying to create realism what is realism here realism is a philosophical argument which argues that reality exists social scientists only find it out reality exists already we only carve out it is not we we discover it we do not invent the reality and it is this social fact he was trying to underline the third uh, fourth thing i think this was uh, he was also having a uh, development of development of essentialism development of essentialism which he took and how again i was giving you example then let me just explain you that uh, you know this that he took this this is thermometer my art is not very good so and this is mercury here now we are not able to we are not able to see the heat we are not able to see the heat but we know that this is 101 199 and 98 then we say that as the this thermometer 
this temperature will rise, we will say, oh, it's temperature. 101, it is back. So what are you basically imagining? What are you basically observing? You are observing the mercury, the rise of mercury. And then you are taking an essence of that rise of mercury into heat, converting that essence into heat. Now this is what is drawing essence from a reality. You are not able to observe the reality, but you are drawing an essence from the reality. That's what is essentialism. And when and when Durkheim, when Durkheim is started giving his own concept of mechanical and solid mechanical and organic solidarity, he started drawing this essentialism from Newton and said that okay, we can also we cannot see mechanical solidarity. We cannot see about the organic solidarity, but we can observe the laws. By observing the laws, we can observe the solidarity and how restitutive law and uh, how these laws create a, uh, uh, create essential understanding of social solidarity in the society. But what is also important to understand that how do we understand causality in the methodology of uh, social sciences? Because without causality, there will not be any sciences. Science is be all end of explaining causality. Without causality, there cannot be a science. That's where, you know, difference between theology and philosophy starts coming up that we observe and we explain causality. Now this, this causality, if you look into, you know, Aristotle has given how to understand causality. One, philosophically, a causality can be Causality can be explained. The constant, the constant conjunction of two events, A and B. These are two events, event A and event B. If they are having constant conjunction, A, B, A, B, A, B, then we will say that A is the cause of B and the event is taking place. This is what the way philosophical understanding. But Aristotle went a little bit further and he said that there is, you know, different, different causes of uh, causality. One, causality of material. Causality of material. Why this, the cause of this podium is wood. The cause of the podium is wood. Had there not been wood, there would not have been a wooden, uh, wooden podium. There would have been a different type of podium. So podium, if it is there because of the wood, that is the material cause. Then there is a formal cause. What form we want to have? This form, the form of the chair, the form of this classroom, the form of this lecture, series, whatever, it is because what form we want into, the reality will convert and formal will become the cause of the form will of the reality will become the cause. There will be formal cause. And the last and the important thing is that resultant, the resultant cause, what result you want. If you really want to have a cloth and if you want to weave, definitely there will be threads, material will be there. Then there will be also force, outside force which will be causing it and ultimately you will have. So there are different types of causes because of which causality can be understood. But in, in the social realm, Causality is considered only to be constant conjunction of two events.
that is the way reality is understood. Now, having said this, positivism as a way to understand social reality, then came people who said that, uh, they started arguing, no, 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 you are talking about uh, a reality, uh, but uh, natural world can only be explained, but it cannot be understood. Natural world can be explained. Why? Because the epistemology is observed reality. You observe a phenomena. You cannot participate in a phenomena. Natural world, for example, a chemical mixture, H plus O2, H2O. But you cannot ex uh, ent enter in that particular formula. Or when a pigmentation takes place, when when the when even even when the uh, uh, you know honey is being formed, ants are moving, you cannot participate that phenomena. And therefore, you can explain by observation, you can merely explain the phenomena, but you cannot understand because you do not have any experience to understand. And therefore, the German school started challenging the understanding of the social world. And general, uh, German school, especially led by a person called philosopher Immanuel Kant. Immanuel Kant is considered to be a very important, you know, uh, Immanuel Kant's contribution is considered to be very, very important. Why? Because he is, he is giving a link between imprecism and analytical understanding. Observation and, you know, how you can understand after observation an event. You have to look into rationalism. Rationalism. These are two very important. Rationalism and imprecist epistemology. Imprecism, observation I am talking about. So, uh, Immanuel Kant is giving you a, a, a philosophy which gives link between imprecism and rationalism. What is rationalism? Rationalism is a process which looks into events by logical explanations or with the experiences of the past. And you start rationalizing things according to the realities which you have been observed, you have been socialized and you have evolved. In that sense, I am trying to argue these two posts. So, uh, <clears throat> so uh, Kant's, uh, Kant's experience that how these two world, empirical world and rational world, social action or realities emerge because of this confluence. Social realities are not realities only because of observation as the natural scientists do. They observe and they explain a phenomenon. Immanuel Kant goes ahead and says that reality is because of imprecision and rationalism. You contemplate in your mind also. You have a former experience. You have been socialized in a reality because of which you make sense. If suppose I laugh, how will you make sense of laugh? Unless and until you have been socialized that this is laughing. So, yeah, there is rationality. Reality presents in itself in abundance because of your inner consciousness, because of your socialization, your rationalism prevails and out of this rationalism and imprecism, reality is looked into. After that came the Neo-Kantians and I will just take two important people in mind. One is uh, Dilthey and another is Henrik Rickert. Dilthey is important for us to understand because he was trying to argue that we can understand the inner self of the other. We can understand the inner self of the other. How can you understand the inner self of the other? Because we can understand the experiences of the other. Experiences of the other.
we can understand the experiences of the other. How can we understand the experiences of the other? By drawing an analogy from our actions. When we laugh, how do we laugh? Why do we laugh? So if we are laughing, then we have it and we observe the other's experience. We observe the experience of the other and then we draw an analogy. Suppose laugh. So I am laughing or he is laughing. I want to understand that gesture. So I will have an analogy that I laugh this way and therefore he is laughing. Oh, I am crying because of this, this reason and that's why he is crying. He has a fears because of happiness. I have fears because of sadness and therefore there is a difference between his happiness and my sadness. So these are inner words which he says that you can understand the inner self of the other by drawing an analogy of your action with our action. This is one of the say uh, one of the addition apart from Immanuel Kant that reality can be understood with imprecision and rationalism, but we can also understand and make sense of a reality by drawing on the analogy of the experience of the other. But then came Rickert, Henrik Rickert. And Henrik Rickert gave that, yes, you can understand the action, you can understand the reality by empiricism, rationalism and drawing an analogy but you can do this only when you are part of the same culture. If you are part of the same culture, then you can definitely have the meaning. Otherwise, you cannot understand. Because every culture may have a very different gesture and meaning of natural or social world. As I told you, if you look, Westerners usually cry when they are really victorious. In our Indian society, when we are victorious, we just jump and we go. I don't know where we go. That is one of the very, you know, difference that you can understand the cricket world. I'm giving you example from the cricket world, what happens in cricket world. But there, of course, they clap, sit down, gentlemanly, and that's why they call cricket is a game of gentlemen. But here, Cricket is religion. So totally different gestures come out from different culture. We give seven types of sweets in our marriages. You can understand if that happens, what will Westerners say? Oh, this is luxury or this is waste of this waste of money. It is waste of, you know, it's so much of wastage. But seven types of sweets in marriage brings us prestige. And that's why we give. So we have a different went. So you have to be part of the culture and then and then only you make sense. Now these three very important aspects of understanding the social reality and in this context that Weber comes and tries to give his own theory of understanding social reality through methodological individualism. We have seen that how Durkheim was against methodological individualism and he wanted methodological holism. Now here Weber says that no, you cannot understand social reality as a holistic phenomena but you have to go to the methodological individualism. Why? Because he has already you know his ammunition. One he has imprecision that you observe. Second he has rationalism. He also has this analogy of understanding the other and fourth it also has a culture that you can make sense. So these four in which Weber locates his methodology of social sciences and if you look that at the outset Weber rejects neo, uh, I will not go into that again neo-Kantian or others but of course three very important aspects of his uh, methodology. One, he argues that
culture and social sciences, the relationship between culture and social sciences is centered around three main characteristics, culture and social sciences. One, value relevance. There is always a value relevance. The, third, the second aspect is interpretative understanding. And the third, valuation. Valuation and the concept formation. Now, it is in this context, I think, uh, Weber's full definition of sociology is very, very necessary. You, I think if you understand uh, his full definition, it will be important because I usually look into uh, uh, definitions. What it is, if you know what it is, it will be easy for you to conceptualize a phenomena. And in that context, I think we look into sociology as he says that sociology is the interpretative understanding of social action. And not only social action, but it helps us to understand the course of the social action as well. And therefore, four very important, uh, four very important component of his definition of social sciences is one, understanding social action. Second, interpretative understanding of social action. Third, causal explanation. And fourth, course and effect. Course and effect. These are four very important aspects of his methodology. So he is away from positivism. Now he is coming to understanding and explaining both the reality. Now what is here uh, uh, if, if you look into that how he manages, how he manages to define social action and he tries to look into that social action which is meaningful, otherwise it is behavior, meaningful social action, meaningful action is social action, even if, even if it is not performed, it, it will be performed in future, it will be called a social action. I have given you my property in writing. What will happen? Is it social action? I have given you my property, but it is not being rationalized. It is not being implemented. It will be implemented when I die. How will be called it social action? But for Weber, it is going to be a social action. If it is, you, uh, you have a right, you have a right to cast a vote. But you do not go and cast your vote. That is a social action performed. Why a social action has been performed? Because you have not performed your legitimized goal. You have not per performed your legitimized action. And that is why it is social action. And therefore, social, every action is not a social action. A action which is only meaningful, that is social action. Now, what is as if that interpretative? What, why interpretative understanding is to be had? It is here that it dissociates. It dissociates from the positivist understanding. I told you the natural world, you can observe and you can understand. But social world is so different. I hit this, nothing happens. But if I come there and hit someone, what will happen? You can understand. Why? Because there is, you know, a different thinking being sitting there. And therefore, it has to be not only observed, but it has to be interacted with. If you interact with him and you start empathizing, not sympathize, empathizing, then and then only you can interpret. And where you can interpret? You can interpret again because of rationalism, because of culture, because of, you know, inner analogy. So all this thing has helped Weber 
to evolve and german school evolved a very different type of social methodology and that is nothing but i call it as human uh, uh, one is of course positivism and another is humanism now these two have really evolved over the years as a methodology and have helped to make sense of the social reality but after that after a point in time what happened after that comes levi strauss and levi strauss said that it's not necessary also to observe the reality it is not necessary to interact with the reality you can understand the reality by only understanding the structures of language he was taking a leaf from society that how the structures have a meaning i give example in my class bus is full bus full hai hmm let me write for you languages but we understand the same meaning why because we understand the terms what are they in their own context we understand what is bus that is a symbol and full that is a uh, that is also a symbol we understand symbol and also within bus full hai again the meaning is coming but the structure is changed language is different because we understand the structure we understand the simple meaning we understand the also symbols and therefore we can make a sense so it is better to understand the symbols according to uh, uh, levi strauss who is talking about that yes we can understand the symbols and we can understand the structure therefore we can understand the reality it is not necessary that you interact with them because by interacting you do not know the language you have ridiculed them but if you you have argued that oh they do not understand your language that is they do not understand english so they are illiterate but you also don't understand their language so you are as literate illiterate as they are for them but you can make sense by understanding their structure that is another level of reality but friends what happened that reality was also tried to understand of the centers when aristotle was trying to understand the reality especially in terms of power and he said that there is only one center of power and that was during his period it was king which was divine origin theory of reality that his words are the last word and whatever see is a reality but then comes marx who talk who talks about that no no there is not a center of reality of power but there are two centers the proletariats and the bourgeois but then comes foucault and he says that it is not only one center of reality there are multiple poles of power there are multiple vantage points of power and he gives example especially of jail that how a prisoner is watched from different angles of power and that's one of the example he tries to give but i'm trying to argue that look there has been over the years over the years development of understanding of the reality it has not been static so if you really want to make sense of the reality then you have to evolve over the years in indian society in jaina philosophy you know uh violence is of three types three types one is of course violence physical violence everyone tries to understand another is verbal violence and third is violence in thought but this type of reality understanding of reality whether it has epistemic basis 
whether it has experimental basis, whether it has, you know, interactive basis, I think that's where the realities start differing. That we have some innate, innate experiential reality which comes from within and remains within and we try to express. But here in the social sciences, as we say, all the realities which have been collected, they have been collected from the data in with interaction of the people, with the experimentation and they have been validated over the years. That's why they have social realities. Second thing, they have also been given causality. Without causality, there could not have been social sciences. They would have remained philosophy. We will have uh, some, uh, some reflections or some questions if you have. Uh, I will be happy to interact with you. I'll stop here.